Hi everyone. Hope you had a good lunch. I'll get two more talks today, so just you know we've talked a lot about outreach in the past, so we can talk about outreach in the present. Um, I'm gonna talk kind of changing gears from what people have been talking about, but I'm gonna talk about an outreach project that I developed um, about a year ago when I was um, I saw a engagement grant that I was like you know, why don't I apply for this? Because I've had this idea for a while and I, and I got it, so I've been able to implement this. And I've had a couple successful runs, so I can maybe tell you guys about it if you're interested in doing something similar or um, maybe this will give you an idea of somewhere you can do outreach. But it's called Dinosaur Doctors and it's a cute logo. So outreach in hospitals. Uh, you, you people, has everyone been to a hospital before? I don't know if you spent any time, I mean, I'm sorry if you've had to spend a long time in a hospital, because um, it can get pretty boring. and there's common, you know, commonly there's outreach tools that are used in a hospital to kind of pass the time and, and interest people. And art therapy is a really common one. Um, and art therapy is great because you can be creative and I mean, that makes people feel better and it takes their mind off things. And also, you know, it provides just in general distraction from being in the hospital, um, from being ill. You get social interaction, you can do it in a playroom or a group. I, I work in children's hospitals, so I say playroom, but you know, you adults do this too. You get social interaction with the person doing the therapy with you, and it's fun. I mean, everyone, you know, some people like painting and drawing and um, and all that. And also, there's there's been so it's hard to do experiments. And I didn't set out to do an experiment in this outreach project. Um, they're sort of hard to, to design in a sense because you know you don't really want to force too much of an experimental design on people when you're like trying to make them feel better. So there's like a lot of suit, there's some, some sort of pseudo experimental serve, you know, surveys that are done ahead of time and they, you know, different groups of people who didn't get, who didn't get therapy and who did art therapy and who did. And they've actually noticed that in some instances, uh, especially with people with cancer, that the symptoms decrease you know, if you survey someone immediately after you're know, doing these creative projects, they actually feel better. Um, so that's so that's awesome. So you know why not try this with science? And I kind of looked around. I had this idea years ago. I remember sitting in my office in New York City and having the idea because I really like sports. And you know, so I follow some of my favorite athletes on social media. And I saw that you know, some of my favorite American football stars were at the hospital, like meeting kids on Halloween. And I was like, well, how much fun is that? Like for the kids to get to meet their favorite athlete. And I was like. You know, but wouldn't they like to? They probably like to come see dinosaurs too. And I was like, but I can't take them to the museum. So I was at the American Museum of Natural History, but I was like, but what if I bring it to them? You know, I mean, that could be equally exciting. So I had this idea. I did do a little bit of research, and I did find one abstract of some uh, astronomers who have done this in France in, in hospitals and care homes. So there's a little bit of a, you know, they had a lot of success. There was a little bit of a precedent for it where they would bring sort of like planetarium shows. And so that's something that's really easily, you know, kind of easy outreach to do in hospitals. Also, is just show, you know, show these beautiful planetarium shows, and people, um, you know, obviously want to see that, and that's fun. Everyone loves space, kind of like everyone loves dinosaurs. Everyone likes generally is interested in space too. And um, there's also a couple other science outreach projects. One that I recently discovered after I've done this at my alma mater, University of North Carolina, at a, the North Carolina Botanical Garden. And so they have a specific program set up with the University of North Carolina Children's Hospitals to do not just outreach, but they actually have this, the, the patients do research projects, which is cool. So if they're there for a long time, they actually help them do like little research plant growth research projects. So, you know, the, these are all, you know, very small ideas that haven't gained a lot of traction. And no one has done it with paleontology outside of, I did find some, some art, you know, some people who did dinosaur themed art day at the hospital, which is not... Which is cool because dinosaur theme, but it's not quite, it's not science. We're still like in the art realm at that point. So if you're, you know, thinking about how to plan this, uh, I kind of came out like, this is a good idea, but now, now what do I do? The focus is on fun rather than education. I'm not giving anyone a quiz. You know, I'm not going to say, okay, what did I just tell you, you know, after I, get, like, after I give them a little talk or let them play with some of the fossils. Um, and you need sort of a range of experiences. And, and this is something that if you teach in an undergraduate setting, it's like really being enforced as sort of a, a range of interactive experiences, just in education in general. So it's not too different, but you really do need to be more tactile. There needs to be things to like play, play with. You know, it has to be fun. So it has to be things to touch. You can't just be like, oh, here's a fossil. Let me just hold it for you. And you can look at it. Don't touch it. You know, you have to like, like the whole point of this that I needed money for and why I got the Paleontological Association engagement grant was to get money to do startup to buy fossil casts. And um, I ended up buying also a few real fossils too. So you, you, you don't need that much money to do it. 
Um, I've started, I started with about 3,000 pounds, and, you know, I haven't even spent it all yet, and I've run the program a couple times, so it's, it's not, I mean, as far as fundraising goes, it's not some insurmountable goal. I mean, it's not paying a salary to me, because this is a volunteer project, um, keeping that in mind, but I'm just talking, like, just materials-wise, the startup costs can actually be relatively low, but I think as academics, we kind of have to think outside the box of how, um, how to do this, because it's not... I don't know how, I mean, I don't have kids, but even if I did, I still think this is pretty different um, in how you interact with a whole range of, of children. So this is what, I've got. these are just some of my materials that I purchased. I got some fossil casts from, I think I bought them from Schools Unlimited um, in the U.S. And so I get things like, you know, claws and teeth are really fun. They, and those are, those are also like solid, which is good, solid pieces. Um, which I'll mention, you know, things break, as we all know. Like when you're passing around that jaw before, like, oh, you think it's pretty sturdy? I was like, no, it, it, that would be, that would five minutes of being broken if I, <laughs> like, brought that. But that's fine if it's 3D printed, which is good. And I think in the future I might use more 3D prints just because if they do break. And also, and also I'll go into, like, you know, it's nice to be able to leave something at the hospital or with the, with the patients. Um, and I also did use some real fossils. This is a cedar chin fossil from, from Mr. Wood's fossil shop in, in Edinburgh, which is a great little fossil shop, and you can buy some of these things that are, you know, the rel again, relatively cheap. The, the, the problem with getting real fossils in general is not just the cost, but it's like, can you clean it? Because we're in a hospital, and there is infection control in hospitals, so I need to be able to bleach these, or like use some sort of bleach wipes because you know, the sick people are touching them, and they're out in hospitals, so you really need to be clean. So this one's good because it's kind of shiny on top, and the bottom is also not so porous, so I can, that can be wiped down, but if something has a lot of like little nooks and crannies and crevices, it's not going to be a great thing to take into the hospital, especially if it's real. If it's a cast, it, it, you can kind of spray it down and not damage it as much. So I got a lot of these casts. Um, I got, I got a, a megalodon tooth, which is always really popular. I got a T-Rex tooth. Um, I, oh, I had that, this one is the Archaeopteryx skull, which is now broken, so mm -hmm. it was cute while it lasted. Um, the jaw broke off. I mean, it was pretty solid, too. Somebody somebody, ripped, somebody just broke it, you know, kind of on purpose because they wanted to see how far it could bend. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> and and I guess I guess thinking about how we, you know, the art, again, you do need a representation of the body of the animal. And at first, I kind of almost neglected to think of that. You know, I had these claws. And it's kind of interesting, actually, that, you know, kids can really identify easily, like, what the claws are and they... They know, and their parents don't know. Their parents sometimes struggle, but they know, you know, the kids know, I got the claw, but you know, it's, it's sometimes nicer to have a representation with the body of the animal. So I bought a bunch of plastic, again, plastic toys on Amazon, try to be, you know, the mouse open, but this, this jaw actually opens and closes, so you can play with that. And, and I think I had some ammonite, some real ammonites, which are fun because I got, I have like rainbow ones. And so I got an ammonite toy because people always like, have no idea, they can't picture like what an ammonite would look like in real life. I mean, I know. Again, there's these toys. We're not striving, again, for accuracy because I need toys that can be broken and played with and that are available and not super expensive. Because um, I did see that there's like some you know, new lines of toys coming out that are hyper accurate, which is awesome, but they're, you know, those are kind of too pricey for probably for what I'm doing at the moment. But I would like to get those if they ever become more available. Like ones with feathers. Okay, fine. Then most of the toys don't have feathers. And this is my dinosaur suitcase, which I just want to show you guys. It's really cute. And I put all of the all of the toys and fossils in this trunky that's a dinosaur. They're called Trunky Saurus. <laughs> and so that, that's what I mentioned that this is funded by the Paleontological Association Engagement Grant, which I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without um, without that money. And this is a picture of my little kit that I give out at the end. So part of being in a hospital is, you know, like I said, it's really boring. So I come in and, you know, we, we do some things together and then I have to leave, you know, after maybe 20, 30 minutes to go to the next ward or I just have to go home eventually. So it's kind of nice to leave them with something because it gives them a positive experience. And it's, that's a big thing. It's like leaving them with a good, you know, a good feeling about how this went and how their time in the hospital was. So I, this is like a draw, a drawstring backpack with a logo on it. And I, this is inside, I made a booklet. Um, this is just some facts about, you know, I've got a couple of dino, dinosaur packages in the art. Again, I'm sorry, it's not accurate, but they're, they're, meant be, they're meant to be cartoons because it's for children and it's cute. So I actually had a, a, an artist do 
representations of the dinosaurs that I asked for um, at the hospital. She's a children's book illustrator, so she just did this for me for free, which was really nice. So I could have some original original artwork in this to give out to the kids. And she worked at the hospital and worked for the kids too, so it was extra special. Some little stickers. And, oh, this is a plaster megalodon tooth that can be painted or drawn on. So that's you know, they want they want like a real fossil to take home, and so in lieu of giving them an actual fossil, I gave them these, and they were actually pretty pretty cheap to buy. Um, found someone who made them for me because I didn't have time to pour all the plaster myself. And also stickers are key, so gotta have stickers. So in practice, um, you need to be ready for a lot of different situations. You, you small groups, so I either worked with you know, two to three people at a time, including sometimes including parents and siblings, so people who are not sick, um, which is, is fun for them too, because a lot of the parents, I mean, again, everyone's bored. Everyone's sitting around, you know, their parents are bored too. So they love to ask questions, and some of the parents, I've had parents that are way more interested than the children, like a number of times, or siblings that thought it was much cooler than, you know, and also, you know, they're, they're sick, so they're not necessarily going to be very animated or seem excited, but you, you never know. It's just like, that's why I leave them with something so they can enjoy it later in case they're not feeling well at the moment. Um, and, and a lot of one-on-one -on -one work, so, you know, if there's, if there's a patient in bed, they usually have a tray table I can, like, put things on and talk to them. There, so I've used a combination of the toys I saw, the fossils, real, well, real fossils, and yeah, this is a nice cast of the lost rubber skull that okay, is not broken, almost broken, almost. I did have to move it a little bit, but now only older kids are allowed to touch that one because it's a special one. That's why my assistant was holding it. And I used also an iPad, which I used to show photos of field work and kind of some of the places I've gone, like what dinosaur bones look like in the field, just so I can show them that real quick. And it's like in a industrial waterproof case, the iPad, so it can't be broken. Well, maybe it can't. We'll find out. But uh, I, I got that so I could also show 3D reconstructions, which I haven't I just had. Like it goes really, the time goes really fast, and they kind of actually more like to play with the toys and the fossils and ask me. I mean, they ask tons of questions, too, and they really do enjoy it. And even if they're not asking questions, um, just having something to pick up and look new to look at is really fun. And you really do need, if you're going to do this, you do need at least two people. I tried to do this alone. Like, I'm do I mean, I am doing this alone, but this woman, Fiona Sullivan, who is at the Edinburgh um, Sick Kids, the charity foundation, she is one of the directors. She actually has been doing it with me, and now I have an intern who does it with me, but you really do need someone to help you because... Sometimes we go to the emergency room or the A and E, and there's like just a swarm, like a, a horde of children descend on you, and they're like taking things and they're showing their parents, and someone stole a dinosaur eggshell, they put it in their pocket, you know. So it's like you gotta be watching, uh, you gotta have two people watching. <laughs> and so these are just some photos from from one of my days that I was at. This is this is all at Edinburgh Sick Kids specifically, which is a great hospital. It's pretty small. It's a good place to start this this project. Um, that's so this is sort of like an example of the one on I wore my dinosaur leggings, obviously for the day, but an example of one on one work in the oncology ward, um, just you know showing this this young guy some some fossils. And I also left him there's like a puzzle on the table because I just sometimes find that the toys or fun things that I can bring and leave because he had a lot of time and he was old enough. The pu that puzzle was very hard, so I had to like leave it with an older <laughs> an older child. Um, and this was uh, I got in the oncology ward, and she loved the little archaeopteryx. So she like had the best time, so like putting on her finger and playing with it, and had so much fun. And um, yeah, really enjoyed touching all the fossils. And this guy was a little guy; he was only you know probably like one and a half years old, but he was you know nonverbal. But he enjoyed picking up all the um, fossils and coming showing them to a younger a baby. He was like kind of like showing and telling like he was teaching. It was so cute. Uh, they don't have a great time. So it was, you know, so far the reception has been has been really positive. But you have to be considerate that some there's going to be nonverbals, people that aren't going to respond to you at all for a variety of reasons. You have to be ready for that. Um, so don't ask. Start asking a lot of questions because sometimes they're just not going to answer. But sometimes some some people love answering questions. I had one sibling of one who asked me a thousand questions and was lining up every single fossil and photographing it and then made a collage for me of all the photos like afterwards and he wanted to know how to label them all you know and it was like so there's all different you get all different kind of um of people when you do this but it's you need to be able to read the patients also i've had some that are very ill but they're like trying to be polite so you just have to like know when to leave or just get up and leave and like end it you know don't just keep talking Sometimes it's hard, but you have to just you know be able to read the, the situation. The patient keep the mood light, like fun. You know, don't if they ask a question, they say something ridiculous. Don't be like no, wrong. You know, 
you can't <laughs> just like it's hard sometimes I think if you're an educator to get out of class mode or undergrad mode or grad student seminar mode when you're allowed to like tell people they're wrong or you know things like you know it's because we're again we're with children and they're not usually feeling the best so and, and I think yeah disinfecting the fossils is um something critical that needs to be done but it's not that hard actually I just got some bleach spray my, the, the hospital that I'm in is not it's not super strict I wouldn't be going into an isolation room or anything at all I mean no one's allowed to go in you know unless you're a doctor and you're fully scrubbed in so we're talking like nor normal level of, di of disinfection and yeah well, yeah so if something seems like you can't break it well that's my advice so just remember that um, that's why I thought 3D printing would be good and I think just in general for, for paleontological outreach or outreach in general, we have this gift that we all are interested in something that's really charismatic, as we've talked about centuries of popularization of a field that people adore for all sorts of reasons. And you can really change someone's day or what you know, or hour or minute with that gift that we have of of what we're an expert in, which is awesome. Um, and a lot of outreach projects are done in kind of typical areas. You know, you're going to hit a lot of the, the same audience a lot of the time. And at least in my experience, you know, like when I was at the Natural History Museum in New York, I hit high-performing high school students a number of times from the same schools. And that's good. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying, like, but think of how m there's a whole world out there of people who don't get access to a museum. And, and I had a lot of people say, like, oh, if, you know, they were living in Edinburgh and they had, didn't know what the National Museum was, and they've lived there their whole life. They just don't, they had no idea. And that's no offense to the museum, they just, it's just not on their radar, it's just not important to them, you know? But, you know, I, I'm just saying to Elsa, you know, because she knows. But <laughs> I, I, showing them this, and they asked where they could go see more, and they asked, you know, how do I learn more about this? Oh, do you have a website? Oh, can I look at something online? You know, so it, you're hitting, pop, and this is parents, and not, this is not necessarily the children, but this is probably you know, older children and parents that are asking more about this. So you can really kind of draw in some underserved populations that might not walk into your museum outreach event. <clears throat> so I think that's really important. And you really can make, it's nice to, sometimes I think as academics, we do a lot of research and we don't know how people are receiving it, so it's nice to see how it's received. And I had a, I had a boy who was, you know, really upset. He was crying. He was laying flat in bed, and he wanted to go home. And he didn't get to go home that day, so he was crying. The ward was completely empty. It's a beautiful day outside. His mom and grandma were sitting there, and he just wanted to go home. And he was just like laying there, like leave me alone. And I was like, oh, but I'll show you some things. And I put them on the table, and he just like wouldn't look at it. And his mom kept asking questions, and I kept handing him things. And you know, he keeps looking. He like picks up one thing, and then by the end of like 15 minutes, he was sitting up in bed, like surrounded by dinosaur toys, being like, you know. So I mean, it's 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 good to be able to use this gift to really inspire, hopefully inspire, at least just make someone feel better for for a day. You know, I mean, it's not you're not going to get maybe a tangible output. You know, I'm not going to get a research paper, or I'm not going to get you know, what were the learning outcomes, um, you know, they're, they're more subjective than that, but I still think that it's, it's definitely something that's really important to do, and I, for me, I would like to continue this, um, it's a really great thing, I enjoy it, and I think other people enjoy it, I like to grow to other hospitals, um, you know, I'm going back to the States next year, and so hopefully there I can make it some sort of non-for-profit or charity, so this can be something that can be done by other people um, and kind of go out there and, and, and try it in different places. And also Care Homes was a good one that I think could be interesting too. It's sort of another venue where people, again, just, you know, lots of time to spend and might want to have someone come in. If they can't get out to you at a university or a museum, like you, you know, you can come to them. And I think our field, paleontology, there's a lot of stuff that you can bring to people to actually have them. Um, you know, kind of examine it, so it's it's really unique in that way. And so I just want to acknowledge my the, the help at Sick Kids Friends Foundation, David Orr, who's a great uh, graphic artist who did this little logo for me, and Kate James who did my art, and the engagement grant that made this all possible. And thanks to you guys for listening. Cause this is I just did this this summer, uh, August and September, and now I'm going to do it again October, November, a couple more. And so this is the first. I started, you know, it's the first time I've actually told anyone about it besides, you know, a, a post on Twitter, like, have fun today at the hospital, you know, or anything like that. So this is good, you know, I thank you really very much for inviting me so I could tell other people about this project that means so much to me. Thanks. <laughs>